the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris coming to you. And we've got a, a great show. I, listen, just stay inside. It's really cold out. You may as well take it easy on this Wednesday. You know, we're getting the snow today that we thought we might have gotten yesterday. It's not a lot, but it's cold enough certainly to get some accumulation and maybe slick spots. So I worried a bit that our guest may not make it today. But I, I imagine he thought to himself, gosh, it's cold. I don't really, and it's kind of, oh no, it's morning line. I've got to be there. And that's one of the many reasons we love Davidson County Sheriff Darren Hall. <laughs> See? I think all he has to do is make a quick call. One of his deputies is out there with one of the vehicles with a snowplow in front. Oh, well, that's not true. That's um, not what but, happened but today I did, either. I didn't, didn't want to hear one. grief from you if I didn't make it. So I, I, I would have crawled to get here. I, I didn't want to hear <laughs> grief from You didn't my... have any problems, did you? No, it wasn't too bad. It, um, I, I live kind of south of town, and, um, you know, we had yeah. quite a bit of snow, but it yeah. wasn't, wasn't too bad. And little, little, the traffic's a little worse, I guess. The one thing that's throwing us for a loop is we see school districts around the area canceling. But Metro, as far as I know, and I haven't seen an update, hasn't said anything. So I guess, I guess, is it still on, Mary Elena? Yeah. Nothing, so Metro's uh, going to stick it out, right? It was funny, my, um, I have a junior in high school, son, oh, okay. and he, um, he, was, he never gets up this early, and I was getting up, and he's up, and I, I said, well, what are you doing? He goes, it's snowing outside, and I said, well, you have a late day. I think they have like an 8.30 yeah, day or so, yeah. so he, he was all excited, and I said, well, uh, what do you, he goes, maybe we won't go to school today. I'm, I'm up to watch. I said, well, that's worse. You're not even benefiting from it. So as I was pulling out of the driveway, uh, you get this notification, so they're, they're, 10, they're get, going in at 10, two hours late. So, oh, they are. Okay, so that's the latest yeah, yeah. My that's son not metro by the way so it's a private school but anyway oh okay yeah, yeah. yeah. so i still so. haven't heard on metro as far as we know um nothing's developed but yeah yeah, yeah we're, she'll let us know if there's an update on that uh, yeah. we'll tell you on that but yeah the <laughs> snow and the cold right now and um listen uh, we'll open up the phone line 737-7587 a few things uh, i want to talk to the sheriff about um first yesterday I refer to you as a visionary. <laughs> no, we had um, guests on um, yesterday that um, were talking about, among other things, you know, the mental health and, mm. and treatment earlier this week as well. And this mental health treatment center just opened yes. up. Yes. All right. And um, I, I think now, how will that mm. square with what's being built at the jail? I'm glad you asked that question. That's uh, that, that's really good. I was uh, I was at the groundbreaking for that a year and a half ago, yeah. I guess, and I was out of town yesterday, so I didn't get to make the the event. But yeah, so basically, uh, what that is is the mental health co-op uh, will have what you and I would call an emergency room. It's a place where you would go if you went to the emergency room today for a, a broken bone. The hours spent there, and it may, maybe up until a day or so, and then you'd go to the hospital for a okay. bed if you stayed here. Same thing. It's a crisis center. Uh, very short stay. I believe it's uh, no more than three days. So you, who will take you? you? Like this would be if a law enforcement officer picks someone up that perhaps was suicidal. Yeah, so, and then so, instead of taking them to the jail or something, they would take them. Yeah, so that's a really good question here because people are confused. The The law says that if a person is a threat to themselves or others, mm -hmm. even if there's no crime, that law enforcement is to take you to a hospital or a setting such as such Not, as not to lock you up, but to get you help. Right. Now, okay. people don't understand that, that that's the biggest issue around the, the state, really, and or even right. the country around the state right now for law enforcement because there's a lot of law enforcement time spent picking up people who aren't criminal at all, have no crimes, but they're being taken to mental health hospitals. And by the way, there aren't that many of them. One of them's in Moccasin Bend and Chattanooga, so you're taking people right. from here to there. So, so right. what happens is there's no crime involved, but that was by law, um, law enforcement was to take you if you're, if you're a threat to yourself and okay. harming yourself. And so, so what's happened historically is they would have to take them to a regular hospital and sit in the uh, emergency room and just oh, wait okay. on a doctor and wait on a, 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 a diagnosis of, of giving you maybe to a, a different location. So right. law enforcement hates that. Right. Um, they I hate it that. because right. they're tied up for a long period of time in a traditional hospital uh, when there's really no criminal activity. And as we speak gotcha. right now, Governor Lee, um, our former colleague, uh, Jeff Long, is now mm -hmm. over Homeland That's Security. Right. Uh, I don't know if it's his public knowledge yet or not. Oh, no, but, that was uh, announced, yeah, the, the Williamson no. County Sheriff. But also yeah. Terry Ash. 
What's Terry Ash Terry doing? Ash is going to work for Jeff Long um, in a... Because he was head of the Sheriff's Association, right. former Wilson County Sheriff. Right, right. So now he's leaving that association yes. position to go work with Jeff I with Homeland Security. I think Chief of Staff or something in that oh. division. Very, and he, but here's, here's where that guys. overlaps with this. Yeah. Um, the number one issue that Tennessee sheriffs are pushing is to get law enforcement out of taking people... Uh, who have not committed a crime to, to mental health institutions. And so my understanding is through the connections of Sheriff Long and Sheriff Ash and Governor Lee that that is a big push to get legislation to change the law where it wouldn't be law enforcement. It would be a medical provider or maybe okay. an ambulance, an EMT. That would take these individuals as long as it's not a crime that's right. occurring. So, right. and I guess this makes me realize, I think what you were gonna say now, yeah. the difference between the facility that you're building that's going to have beds, I guess, for mental health and, and I guess drug treatment yes. too, is that you're handling folks when there's a crime involved. Right. And they come and they bring them to you, but instead now of you having to just throw them in a cell, you have a place where maybe they can get some treatment. Yes. Right, is that right? Yes, Nick, now keep going, but, keep going. You're right on, you're right okay, on. Okay, but, but the difference, I'm trying to get the difference between mm -hmm. what your facility will be and what this new one that just opened is, and it sounds to me like you are dealing more with the criminal element. Right. These are maybe folks who have mental illness issues that um, have not committed a crime, but they think are a threat to themselves or others That's because right. they're kind of out That's of their right. head. Which is fantastic. Oh, God, and, yes, and we yeah. need it. We need it. We Absolutely. need it. Absolutely. It's a three day, up to three day stay. So that, that's one issue because okay. you got to get something done. Where do they go after that? But that's still right. very important. But here, here's, what, here's what's kind of unfortunate. The number one reason a mentally ill person comes to jail today in Nashville is for failing to do something you ask them to do, not a new crime. Okay. So, so the point is, originally they were charged with trespassing. They were given probation. They never went to probation because they're off their medication. That's they're naked there. in the park. The police pull up. The police can't take them to this new center you opened up if there is a warrant for their arrest. Okay. Right? That's a crime. they got to bring mm -hmm. it to the criminal justice system. Yeah, it's to be processed. And so okay. that's kind of where we're targeting that whole population. It's the number one reason a person comes to jail. And that makes sense. It's ridiculous because they're being busted at this point, not for the uh, original crime. They've already been busted for that. It's for failing to follow up with their probation officer. And at this point, you know, you're like, oh, geez. I mean, right. we're going to put them in the jail. I mean, this and way this maybe system. you get them back on their meds, get their heads clear. And take them out of the criminal justice yeah, system. They right. really never should have been on probation, quite you. frankly, because if you had the diagnosis yeah. and you knew they were mentally ill, you should never never expect them to make probation. You should treat the illness not to not as a right. criminal. The other thing, Nick, and the police officers are friends of mine. I grew up with them all, so a lot of them, so I, I, I can talk about them because they're family, yeah. if you will. The reality is that if you pull up on a person today who's in crisis, mental health crisis, and you're a police officer, you have a choice. Do I put them in my car because they're a threat to themselves or others and take them to a mental health institution and or hospital and wait sometimes six, seven, eight hours mm -hmm. uh, for care to be provided? Um, or do I determine that, wait a minute, that's disorderly conduct I see him doing. Even though it's a crisis, it is disorderly for you to be screaming and taking your right, shirt off. Right. That makes it a crime, then I can drop him off at the jail and go back to work. Uh. And, and then that gets dumped on right. you. So the reality of it is yeah. the, de the incentive, yep. unfortunately, is to I not, not dream up a charge because it is disorderly to scream uh, curse words in a, in a right. mall. Yep. Um, but what happens is when the police arrive, I know. the motivation, unfortunately, has been that it takes a long time to go through mental health centers, so I don't want to do that. Well, this will help. It will reduce the time. Mm -hmm. if you take them to the new center, which I think is great. But police officers are creative, and they're creative because they want to do their job and get back to work. And so if, they're, if they bring some person to jail, that person's going to have mental health and physical check mm -hmm. and everything else, and the officer can drive away. Um, if you take them to a mental health center traditionally or a hospital, you're sitting there paid to be a law enforcement mm -hmm. officer basically in, in a yeah. lobby. Right. And, and they don't like that. And so you're not going to get anybody to prove that, right. but I promise you that's what happens. No, that makes sense to me. So right. now, okay, right. so, the, so the, is the, the downside, I'm just getting a handle on that for you. So do you think you'll have them bring more to you? Is that the idea? But so, you know that going in, yeah, then maybe. So one of the target targets of this new center is to, to get the police out quicker. That's which what will I would help, think. Right. Which will that's help. Good. That'll help. Yeah. And so that, that'll reduce some incentive. Uh, 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 to come up with to, a yeah, crime. A crime. Now, gotcha. but let's say the police still come up with a crime. Guess what? Once you get here, we're taking the crime away. Oh. 
See, that's what the center is going to do. When you arrive here, mm -hmm. our center, when you have a misdemeanor and oh. you're diagnosed mentally ill, you're not going to be booked and charged as a criminal in that case. Yeah. So either way, in the future, we're decriminalizing mm -hmm. it, which is what we're all trying to do. Gotcha. Um, hopefully, a center like yesterday opening um, helps us because the police will be encouraged to go there instead of coming up with a crime. If they bring them down here with a crime, we're going to decriminalize yep. that by diverting them into the mental health center. So. Either or, we're going to be in a much better place. Um, I was telling somebody this, you know, four years ago, and I've been here a long time, and we had nothing. We had no new beds. We had no one no, talking no. mental health. And four years ago, we started saying, we're going to build a facility, and when they bring them here, we're going to divert. Since that conversation started, the mental health co-op is opening these beds. St. Thomas Hospital is building. Vanderbilt's building right now. Yeah. So in the next year, there will be multiple opportunities to take people, which is ideal. And um, you I, know, we're just happy well, to see I it. I just think it's great, and I know you were one of the leaders on this. The city is uh, addressing more of the issue of mental health. That every city needs to do that, and it's a huge thing. It is. And it's coming around, Sharon. It is. It's coming it is. around in it large is. measure because I know of what you, you've advocated all along. Before we go to the break, real quick, I drove in again today, and it, that outside facade on the jail is really coming together and I finally I was trying to like, you know, initially I'm like oh, that's kind of really frankly kind of ugly <laughs> so I thought you know I mean but it's nowhere close to being done so that's not fair but as I come down now James Robertson and I look to my right and I, I see um, the, uh, the glass, front of it yeah. and the the glass and all that it, it, I guess that's gonna be the main entry off right. that. it looks like it's gonna be really neat looking and it's getting close but you always said getting the outside and it up is the easy part the guts are gonna take more time right because it looks like it's almost done yeah they, they're moving their own schedule and, and okay. we we expect somewhere in the fall I would I would say somewhere October ish um, yeah where it would be fully functional it, I think they'll finish most of the the work punch list and all that in July and August but we we see it as a, a late fall operational facility Wow! by, by the late fall yeah. this year and think about moving, it, that time so. is really gone I remember when it was oh, it's gonna be forever yeah it's gonna be here before you know it well and we walk through it and you're, you're right you, you, you can see it inside a little better where you can the, the cells and the, and the program units and the medical units and all that but um, but there's so much behind it there's so much electronics oh, and everything I can only that goes imagine. into it so so I, uh, I think I think everything looks good. We uh, the, the front of it is what you would almost call the administration building with yeah. the warden. Most people would call it a warden and program staff, administration of the building, visitation. And your office all that. will be. No, I'm going across the, across road, the river road. on South Fifth Street. That's We're tearing it down right now. And uh, that's where that's what you've said before. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. And every time you talk about the wiring and all that, I just go back to when you gave me that tour of uh, the old one and going into some of these uh, rooms and looking at like I think we're going to get electrocuted if we don't get out of here. Yeah. I mean, it was so old and decrepit. I mean, it's just a really, really. And you know when that thing gets built, by the way, you know there's some restaurants. It used to be the Perch, now it's a Mexican yeah. restaurant yeah. right there on the corner. Right. And I hope that when that gets going, it does better for the, everyone's business in the area, including. You notice right next two buildings right next to the station they're here. Gone, you blink huh? and they're gone. And one is going to be, I think, a, a boutique hotel. Wow. I think, and the, uh, next to it's going to be another mixed use. I think more restaurants. It's literally next to the station That's here awesome. on James Robertson. And I think all of that might be driven by when this finally opens and all the more people that will come they here. They have over 200 employees there, 24/7. Yeah. So I mean, for they will lunches live and there, stuff, right. you'll have more. It's, I think restaurants around here. And, and you know, Nick, one thing that, that hasn't been talked a whole lot about is um, <coughs> it was real important to me. You, you, were, you were along for the ride of, of the argument to move our staff right. to Harding and of course when that didn't happen but one thing that people didn't understand was we own the the city owned the land at Harding and so our staff would park free yeah so when they forced us to move back downtown which was not a very good decision and living on that property um, it was it was critical for me recruiting staff and keeping staff that they didn't pay half their salary to park and so in that building every employee will have a place to park it's underground all underground there um, and, and that's gonna help us I mean at least like I said it's safe it's secure and they can come to and from work and, and that's huge too because that means they won't be taking spaces up above right. ground where all of us Everyone and other people are going to right. municipal or other places yes. need to park so it, it, right, it'll help cool. them and it would be a really good facility when it's over and, and I'm like you I'm watching it uh, come out of the ground in a very fast way it's so. exciting I know both of us kind of were in agreement that it would have been better if they just right. put something else there but it's here it's gonna look good and it, it, gosh it's, it's gonna be here before you know listen we'll take a break when we come back right, we've got some folks who've already called in uh, and you know the number seven three seven seven five eight seven more from the sheriff and your phone calls with him for the remainder of the hour so jump in if you have a question or comment right after this. Stay with us.